Well, thank you all. I am here to tell you there is no better time in the world to be an entrepreneur than right now. The European innovation entrepreneurial community is coming of age and bring me your business plans. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk just for 10 minutes and give you a quick overview of what we see happening in the global economy, how millennials are affecting it, and I hope to do the unthinkable, which is to keep you off your smartphone for at least 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna throw it open to you for any questions you might have. Let me start out with this. How the heck did Silicon Valley get here? And I'm the rare person who grew up here. I've lived here for over 50 years. When I was a kid and we came here, there was nothing here except for two things. Stanford University, Hewlett Packard, and a lot of fruit trees. I've seen it all unfold. I'm not sure that I agree with the president of Estonia. I think it can be recreated. It pains me to say it. It is unique, it is special. I will tell you how we got here, but there's no reason in the world it cannot be created other places. Let me start with the top. You need world-class universities. You already have that in much of Europe, but you need to go a step beyond. You need to teach people to think beyond the status quo, to think about how you can change the world, how you can be entrepreneurs, how you can do things differently, and we'll come back to that. Second, government funding helps a lot. In the US, you probably know we love to say, oh, the Europeans, they're all socialists, too much government. The reality is a lot of what has made America what it is, is government funding, some to the military, a lot to research institutions, the internet, GPS. Thank you, government funding. That is part of what made this happen. Venture capital. You have to have financial sources that allow people and encourage them to take risks. Press your government leaders to have more of the pension funds invest money in this area. And lastly, immigrants. There is no Silicon Valley without immigrants. This is what has made us great. Over half of the companies that go public here every year are taken public by immigrants. Andy Grove said, you must either be an immigrant or think like one to be successful. And I know a lot of people in Europe are thinking, oh my God, all these Syrian immigrants, what are we gonna do with them? Folks, our most famous entrepreneur is Steve Jobs, the son of a Syrian immigrant. I only hope that we still have the prescience to let in people like this in the future they will drive your economy. This new economy is based on three things. It's based on the new ethos, the new mindset, and that is you must disintermediate everything. And it's particularly hard to do when you're a top university like a Harvard or Stanford. Why do things differently? It's worked, you're on top. It's hard for the US to do things differently. We've been inculcated with this notion that we're on the top, but we have to reinvent ourselves. The new ethos, Steve Jobs, you must disintermediate the business models. New customer. Folks, everything has changed. For 50 years, baby boomers dominated the global economy. You know the ethos. It's who can buy the biggest TV and the biggest car and the biggest house, and you're going to throw it out and buy an even bigger one. It's all going away. Millennials, as of 2017, are the largest buying cohort in the world. We must all attune ourselves to what millennial consumers want. So what do they want? A smaller carbon footprint in everything they do, and they want to live a life of a higher purpose, and they want companies to adhere to that. Two, they want cleaner air, food, and water. They want a cleaner lifestyle. Number three, they want complete connectivity in every part of their life. Their home, their work, their cars all the time. We invest in companies that provide those things. And the third thing you've got to get your head around is that there are new technologies and business models changing everything. And I'm just gonna run you through a few of these differently. For the rest of your lives, you're gonna hear about the sharing economy, internet of things, big data. And I just wanna say a word about each. Sharing economy. For most of my life, if you could go to a Hilton hotel, 
It was a big deal. There were 2,300 of them around the world. It was wonderful. But today, Airbnb, in less than eight years, will give you rooms in 25,000 cities, twice the size of Hilton Hotel and doubling every other year. And the sharing economy has not even begun to hit its peak. Internet of Things, changing faster than people can understand. Smartphones haven't been around that long. They're already in the hands of two billion people and the number is going through the ceiling. Cisco says that there will be 50 million, uh, sorry, billion IoT devices by 2020. I was just talking to a good friend of mine. They went on their 30 year anniversary to Africa where they had done their honeymoon. And I said, what changed? I said, well, a lot of it's the same. But when we were standing in the middle of the Serengeti Plains, the Maasai warriors are all on their smartphones. It's a little odd. <laughs> IoT is going to change every part of your life. You're going to see devices coming into your home, making your life easier, but on the same time, listening to everything you do. You may be aware we've recently had a murder trial here uh, where a uh, wife killed a husband, and it was all recorded. And the question is, is the recorded uh, uh, recording admissible in court? Is that a violation of privacy? For the members of parliament, you will need to get your arms around two things quickly. Privacy and also how we do a better job of making sure everybody is involved in this new technology revolution. In big data, revolutionizing everything. We talk about information being the oil of the 21st century, driving every part of our economy. It is not about factories and making things. It's about how we can use information to change every facet of our lives. No facet, perhaps more, than autonomous vehicles. I served on the board of Tesla. And a lot of people, including my wife, thought I was nuts because who would buy an electric car, really? Mr. Musk plans to sell 500,000 of them next year. But I will tell you right here and now, autonomous vehicles are coming behind. It will change our entire society and we need to get our arms around what are the rules, what are the regulations, who are gonna own these things. But I will just give you two data points. Ford Motor Company, which may be the laggard in the auto industry, is putting fully autonomous vehicles on the road in uh, three and a half years, 2021. The president of Ford has already committed. If you are worried about where the car is going and you want to jump into the front seat and take the wheel, you're out of luck because there will be no steering wheel, accelerator, or brakes in those cars anymore. And that's four years out. Teslas, new Model S's, have been driven from San Francisco to New York with no one touching the wheel 96% of the trip. The technology is here now. The real questions are how we make it work for a society. I want to just give you this case study because I was on the board of Tesla and I watched it unfold. Some of you remember the EV1. And people said, my God, I saw that movie. Who killed the electric car? And folks, it was played up as kind of a conspiracy. Here's the honest to God truth. It was a crappy product. GM didn't do very well. It was slow. It was ugly. Uh, it wasn't very fast. And they only made 660. And unfortunately, GM had the bad judgment to crush all of them. Tesla, just 16 years later, comes out with a car with a range of almost 300 miles, 0 to 60, faster than most Ferraris. The safest car ever tested by the National Highway and Transportation Society. It changed everything, producing 1,000 a week. Starting next year, Tesla, the facility literally just eight miles from here, will be producing 10,000 a week. By last year, the first mass market electric vehicle coming out, and in the first two weeks, without even a prototype you could touch or drive, they'd taken 400,000 orders. And just so you know this, 
revolution of autonomous vehicles isn't just about Tesla, Mercedes, and virtually every other vehicle company. We'll be putting autonomous vehicles on the road within the next year or two. They demoed a lot at the Global Auto Shows in Dusseldorf in LA, and I'll give you a little preview. They have wooden floors in them. They've got cushy seats. Folks, it looks just like your living room, and the outsides, they all look the same. But it's coming faster than you want. It will not be a car as we think of it. It'll be an extension of your home and an entertainment center. And these last two slides are my favorite. We'll throw it up into a question or two. I know a lot of people are saying, these things take a long time. I, my kids might be lucky to see them, decades. When you get to that inflection point, like Steve Jobs did with the iPhone, like Henry Ford did with cars, look at this picture, 1900. This was the Easter Day Parade down Fifth Avenue in New York City. If you look carefully, you will see one, one internal combustion driven vehicle. Everything else is a horse and carriage. Just 13 years later, 13 years, Every car on the street, except for one, one carriage still left with a horse, it all changed. You are the entrepreneurs that will create this new world, and I promise you, it will happen a lot faster than the 13 years it took at the turn of the last century. So, with the European audience, it seemed only fitting to end in Latin. In the 15th century, in Spain, on the bottom of every coin, it said, ni plus ultra. You know what this means, there is no more beyond. Because let's face it, we knew what written history was. You go outside the Straits of Gibraltar, and there is nothing but uncertainty in the unknown. You might conceptually even fall off. But, da Gama, Magellan, Columbus, one after another, they go out, they come back, and they tell us the same thing. Everything you have been told, including Europeans aren't good entrepreneurs, is not true. There is a whole new world of innovation out there. And the Spaniards had the wisdom to change all of the coins and reprint on them plus ultra. There is this new world. And for the next two or 300 years, the Spaniards were the masters of that new world before they were disintermediated by the English and the Americans, and we'll see who comes next. My challenge to you is to be the explorers that help create this new world. I would love Silicon Valley to rule the world of innovation for decades or centuries to come, but someone someday will surpass this. My challenge is that you can help be part of that. Thank you for letting me come.